Thank you for inviting us, Teddy. Hi, Alice. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank <Yeah. laughs> you. Now, the thing about Teddy is he's going to talk to us about biochar and he's going to explain to us how we can use it in our gardens. Go. Great. Thanks, yeah. Uh, Alice. Yeah, it's very nice to be on the show. Thank you. Um, so my name is Teddy Kaninjui. We're here at Acacia House. And one of the products we make under our business, Cookswell Jikos, is biochar. And biochar is a very interesting, it's sort of one of these so old it's become new again type mm -hmm. of things. So it's been traced back to people using it in the Amazon 800 years ago type of thing. And what they call it is terra preta, so black soil. So almost like the red soil, but yeah. now it's darker. So the basic concept behind it is charcoal and charcoal dust, derivatives, they act like a sponge. So charcoal can absorb more than twice its own weight in water and also it absorbs all the nutrients and has a really high surface area. Mm -hmm. So for all of your beneficial fungus and microbacteria, it's an ideal place for it to live. So when you mix it into your soil or your compost, you're improving and amending your soil and making sure that it can hold water for longer. And as we know with well-drained red soils or sandy soil, you feel like you're watering all the time. And it also will, of course, like a sponge, hold in a lot of those nutrients and slow release them. Now tell me, um where do you get your charcoal? Where do you get this charcoal dust? So there are a number of different ways of doing it. So we have two options for people. We sell mm -hmm. kilns that you can use for making your own biochar oh, and charcoal for cooking. Mm -hmm. And we also then supply charcoal dust that's collected from all over Nairobi. So wherever they sell charcoal, wood charcoal that comes in from the rural areas, mm -hmm. when they're unloading those big bags, about 10% of all of that turns into this fine dust. Amazing. Because it's breaking apart yes. and you can't use it in a Jiko. Mm -hmm. So we've set up almost a town cleaning service where we partner with those people, charcoal vendors around Nairobi, to buy their dust, bring it back, clean it all, and then use it for all these different agricultural uh, uses such as biochar for farming and also for coating indigenous tree seeds mm -hmm. for seed balls. The interesting thing with some of that old dust is we've found coins when we're cleaning it that date back to 1922 Can in the imagine? bottom of those piles yeah, of charcoal. Yeah. So using that to help increase you know soil fertility and productivity is a really nice way of bringing that back yeah. into the loop. So how many for example if these people do bring you back the charcoal dust mm -hmm. how many bags or kilos do you get from one sort of delivery from these areas um so what happens is we actually have a truck that goes out to all of these different vendors they've okay. had partnerships with some of them for over 25 years so mm -hmm. very much first name basis with each other mm -hmm. they'll call and say we've got our dust is piling up too much you know come and get some can you show me what it looks like this yeah um, oh my gosh yeah. so the biochar is ours is oh, sifted okay. down to about three millimeters and it's just little chips of charcoal dust. Yeah. And so, you know, if this is very light. 10 grams, yeah. it will absorb 20 grams worth of water and then slow release it. So the thing is with it, when it comes like this, it's mm. like a sponge that's plain. There's nothing in it. There are no okay. nutrients. It's basically just something to hold your nutrients in water. Yeah. So what you have to do is charge it. Because if you put it into the soil without activating the charcoal yeah. first, it will actually draw some of the nutrients for the first few oh, months okay. while it absorbs. Yes. So what we'd typically do is one of, one of three or four options. Mm -hmm. You either take this biochar, if you have livestock, you can use it with their bedding. And we'll show you, I put it in the duck coop and then the ducks poop on it and oh, it helps also yeah. absorb ammonia, keeps yeah. it drier, cleaner. And then when you take all the manure out, your biochar has absorbed all of that manure, you put it into your soil. Or you can just get regular old you know, boma manure. manure. Yeah. yeah, so then this stuff, because both of them are dry, yes. what you'll want to do is actually mix it in a barrel of water. So typically what I'll do is oh, just get an old little... bucket, <laughs> get a so, shovel, and I'll mix it usually about 10%. So if I put one spoon of the charcoal dust, okay. then I'll put about 10 spoons of the manure in there. And then you leave it here. And then I'll leave it in there for a couple of days, a week maybe, sort of mm. thing. And then once you can pick it out and you really see that now the charcoal dust has absorbed all of this manure, the manure will change the color of the water. So you can also, I mean, every gardener has their own yeah. special compost yeah, yeah, tea. Yeah. And you'll swear by marigolds, but I you know. put some garlic. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. you sort of build it towards thinking of it as this blank sponge. Yeah. You build towards what type of soil do you have and what type of plants are you growing? Okay. So there's not really any one rule of how to use the biochar. It's more based off of, do you have clay soil? Do you have sandy soil? Yeah. Are you growing tomatoes or are you growing petunias or whatever yeah. it is? Yeah. 
So what you're going to do is actually mix it, leave it yeah. there, leave yeah. it here. Yeah, so I'll mix it all in. And then it becomes like a tea. Yes, and then I'll pour out all of the liquid onto whatever On, plants look yes. like they need it. Yeah. And then that solid, all the mix that's left over, the slurry, that's what then you'd mix into where you're planting. And so you don't top dress it because the roots aren't on the top. Yes. So it's when you're digging a hole for a seedling or if you are, you know, digging up or re-aerating your lawn or something, yes. then you'd surface dress there. But for the most part, you want to bury it where the roots of the plants are because oh. that's the most benefit. So you sort of dig it in the soil. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So with a small bush like this, yeah. what you do is not put it at the base of the trunk. That's a sort of common mistake because yes. most of the roots are actually at what's known as a drip line. Yes. So you can see where the very last leaves are. That's where the majority of the roots are working their way outwards. So what I do in an area like this with my biochar oh, so mix yes. is dig a little bit around it and not very deep. Because if you look closely, you can see the roots of this plant are already there. You can actually see And it. then yeah. mix in a bit of the slurry, of course, once it's now yeah. all wet and stuff. And then cover it back up with compost. Okay. And so when you do a rains, whole ring all the way around. Amazing. Yeah. It's really interesting. So uh, what do you do with the rest of it, all that slurry? Do you dry it in order to use it or do you just leave it all um, You can. Wet? I usually use, leave it wet. Okay, if I was transporting you, it, then yeah. I'd dry it just because it would be really heavy okay. and you don't want to carry okay. a heavy wheelbarrow or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then also for the biochar, it's a one-off application. So once you've applied it to your soil, being charcoal and carbon, it doesn't degrade. Uh -huh. And so that's now in there. So you only have to apply it once, once you're using it. Interesting. So that's quite useful with it. And um, one extra benefit, of, of course, is one kilo of charcoal dust. It's pure carbon. So it's one yes. kilo of carbon trapped from the atmosphere. Amazing. So the more carbon you're fixing into your soils, not only are you getting a healthier soil, but some people are even using biochar with construction to start making carbon positive houses to offset how much cement they're using. Oh, interesting. Um, so yeah. there's a whole other range of uses with Amazing. it as a filter. You can yeah. use it for filtering dirty water, uh, Actually, all the way up I'm to industrial things with charcoal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so charcoal has a lot of interesting water, uses yeah. beyond just the barbecue okay. sort of thing. Wow, interesting. Okay, Teddy, so now we're going to the chicken coop. Mm -hmm. um, what are you doing there? Um, so I think for most gardeners, if you can have the space and you can make space, it's yeah. really key to have yeah. some form of livestock. They play a very, very interesting part of any sort of holistic system. Yeah. So we have ducks and we keep ducks and what they do is they eat the slugs, which a lot of people don't oh, like lovely. slugs yeah. as one of the many things. Yeah. And also what we'll do is we'll put the biochar in the bottom of their bedding in the little duck hut where they sleep. And then mm -hmm. what happens with that, it's a much easier way than having to fill up your own drum. Because yes. as the ducks poop onto the biochar and walk on it, it will actually start absorbing all of that manure and reduce the amount of ammonia inside of it, keep it a bit drier and cleaner. So if you have any livestock, biochar is really good to mix in with their bedding. And then after a few weeks, when it's nice and soaked in and mm -hmm. you're changing it out, you'd pull out all the litter and stuff and then mix that into your compost, into your farm, under your plants one and so on. One-stop shop. One-stop right, shop and they can help and they help yeah, do the work, which is nice. Look. I'm interested. <laughs> Here we are in the in the duck co uh, coop. <laughs> Come with me. <laughs> so very so, simple. I yeah, always think it's very good. Going They're going to help uh, with our gardening. So yes, I'll tell just me. sprinkle this all in there, just like so. And then that's it. And then mix it with a bit of sawdust and some wood chip, just yes. like you probably would most people with your poultry. Yes. Um, and then we'll leave it there for another two, three weeks. And then as the ducks poop in there overnight, when we clean it all out, that goes straight, straight to, the into, into the to the compost or around top dressing of different Amazing. plants. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Lovely. Um, so where else are we going? Your vegetable mm -hmm. patch. You're going to explain to us how you're using this biochar. biochar. So let's go. Yeah. Show us. I'm excited. <laughs> Um, so what I've done here is we decided, because it's really good for people to demonstrate and see how things are working. Yes. Um, so we've done four little patches of a small biochar sort of demonstration lot. Okay. And so I'll show you this one on the, well, first off, I'd like everyone to think, if you look at these, 
Who looks healthiest and which ones would you start eating first? I'd go for that one. You'd go for that one. Perfect. Yeah. And that's the one that has the most biochar oh, is in that it. the one with the biochar? So how I've set this up, each one's, you know, a bit bigger than a square meter. Yes. And this one is nothing in it. It's a control just as the soil is. Okay. This one is biochar by itself with nothing else mixed into the biochar. Okay. This one now is biochar and manure. And okay. this one is biochar and compost. And so definitely, as you said, the biochar and compost really seems to have the best. And actually, when I came in the morning earlier on, it was the only one which was actually standing straight. It was all standing yeah, straight. Yeah, because I yeah. think it's all that moisture mm -hmm. in the soil. So what we're doing right now with this little test bed is mm -hmm. beginning its drought stress. So as of Monday, we've stopped watering them. Uh -huh. And I want to start seeing what's the difference in behavior with the ones, because a big thing with biochar is that it helps absorb the water yes. and slow release yeah. it so it'll be interesting to see in a couple more days which one is who's less to... turgid and who's yeah. suffering the effects of this lovely sunlight we're getting at the moment and how old is this kale very young this was i think three maybe four weeks maximum really when we planted it actually with all that manure and mm. the biochar yeah it's see, great it's actually it it's a meal for out. four or yeah. five people already yeah, so I think after this week of drought stress, then yes. we'll start harvesting it and then continue from then. And when we do harvest it, one of the things we'll do is weigh each patch okay. and see how many okay. grams do you get per whatever in total. Yeah. Interesting. No, this is really interesting. And you can actually use it in your garden, like with mm -hmm. flowering plants. And, and again, is that I would actually mix the biochar and the compost, compost and, and then make my, my tea mm -hmm. and actually distribute it on my plants. Yes, and distribute yeah. it or potting Amazing. potted plants. Potted when you're repotting re re them Lovely. especially, yeah. then because you want to get that char into the roots yes. and into the root zone. Yes. Or when you're first potting them, yes. that's a really great time to mix 10% biochar into now your and compost or whatever. Interesting. Yes. So that's, yeah, that's so I'll it. show you then the other yeah. way of, so this is how you make our own biochar. So we yes. can go up to the top yeah, and I'll show you our little kiln, kiln and see I how it's going. Look, uh, yeah, yeah. What is happening here? Welcome. So this is a small charcoal kiln. Yes. And so this is for making your own cooking charcoal for like barbecues and stuff. Okay. And then also making your own biochar. Uh -huh. And so how we've done this, it's a very simple sort of little cylinder. Yeah. And you light a fire in the bottom of it. Okay. When that fire starts going really well, you fill it up to the top with whatever uh -huh. you're making into charcoal. Okay. And I'll go through some of the options in a sec. And then the smoke comes up through this pipe. Mm -hmm. And because you can feel this pipe's really hot and uh, it's hotter than the outside uh, temperature. Yeah. So it starts condensing the smoke going through this tube. What and you get what from you get there the is very interesting is now it's known as wood vinegar. And this is basically liquid oh. smoke. Wow, so it this and it really nice. smells really nice, yeah, like it. a packet yeah. of crisps or yeah, barbecue. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this in its raw form, though, you would dilute with water and use to spray on your garden as an organic pest control. Oh, isn't that interesting? Yeah, and how that works is it's not so much that it kills the insects. It's more that because it smells like smoke, the attracted. insects think, well, they don't. They're like, that place is fire. Oh, don't go oh, there. It's dangerous. So cool. Yeah, that so we've really been uh, doing some really fun trials with this yeah. and seen people in different greenhouse settings, like yeah. commercial horticulture uh -huh. using it, uh, striped mealybugs, whitefly, all sorts of different stuff. And I'll share the link with you where there's a lot yeah, of information please. on how to yeah. use it and which things it works best on. Yeah. But what's been fascinating to see is one or two of our customers who've bought our kilns have started selling this for about 500 shillings a litre, which is more money than the charcoal they're making. Amazing. So if you think about it, the smoke it's is actually more valuable than charcoal. Absolutely. And how many people in Kenya have made charcoal and literally let the cash and, go up in and there? And start an industry, yeah. And start a little industry. So basically, is that once you do buy this, is that once you do spray, everything is like a keep off. So you can use it in your vegetable garden. Yeah, absolutely. Against all those mealy mm -hmm. aphids, everything. Yeah, it's best used as one of those, in part, as like an IPM, an integrated yeah. pest management scheme. Yeah. So you'd still want everything else you're doing for a healthy organic yeah. garden. And this is one of those parts this that you use in it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, fantastic. And then, yeah, yeah well, with the different biochars. So yes. what happens with the biochar is you typically, two very far examples would be a coconut husk versus a piece of yeah, wood. This is what, yeah. You can see the husk is very, very fine. It's very, very porous. It's very almost, porous. it looks like a sponge, exactly. Yeah, actually. The yeah. charcoal from a tree, though, is the opposite. It's a, bit, it's yeah, a lot it's a bit harder. harder. It's a lot more solid. Yeah. So these, this is what you'd use for cooking. This is to make your beans, to do a barbecue okay. with. Because it's long-lasting. You'd long want to long-lasting yeah. burns for a long it time. Takes a long you'd time. want to use charcoal from your prunings and branches for yeah. cooking. But then for biochar, because what you want is stuff to be able to absorb yeah. in there, is you can use anything from 
uh, maize cobs to coconuts to bamboo yeah. to mango seeds. Yeah. And what's really interesting with that is there's a lot of this type of waste is very available yeah. everywhere. And yeah, you can, can try that. Oh, and look how it's come bamboo. out just like a piece and of bamboo. It's soft, huh? Yeah. Yeah, so all of this stuff you'd need to crush up a little bit. Yeah. So again, for a lot of people, they'd actually put it in if you have some livestock, you know, some sheep or cows okay, or something. Then they'd they walk in it, crush it. it up. I mean, otherwise you can just trample on it yourself. Yeah. And mix it with your compost, mix it with your manure again, and then you apply it into your soil. So the small kiln, you'd make about a quarter of a bag of charcoal dust in a day. Uh, your bag. standard bag of charcoal sort what, of thing. the gunia bag? Yeah, the, a quarter the of a gunia, yeah. A quarter, that's and a then, lot. It's a lot. And then the yeah. big kiln, you'd make about a whole gunia per day. Oh, amazing. Yeah. And then still have And about a litre of vinegar from Fantastic. each of them. Fantastic, yeah. Fantastic. And the vinegar, of course, you get different flavours of vinegar, uh, different types from different woods and different yeah. trees. Yeah. And so maybe you have sugarcane available, you'll get then sugarcane vinegar or whatever. And what is that metre there? Do you have to heat this at a certain sort of uh, No, so you more actually tell how it's working yeah. from the smoke itself. And if you feel that with your hand, you can feel that it's actually moist. Oh, yeah, and there's sort moist, of yeah. steam in it. So what will happen after a few hours, this changes from white to a light blue, and that means all of your charcoal is now ready. You'll remove this kill, you'll remove this lid. Oh, interesting. Mm. Is it actually becoming charcoal? Not yet. So right now you can okay. see we're just using some small little branches. Yeah. Um, oh, there it is. Okay. This so to turn it off, yeah, you take this big lid off and put this on, oh, that cuts on. out the airflow. Yeah. So you remove this completely and, and then you put this on, that cuts off the airflow and then your charcoal starts extinguishing. Okay. So no late oxygen. in the afternoon when all the smoke is finished, yeah. I'll remove this, put the green lid on, squeeze that down and then tomorrow morning it'll be cool, ready to use. Okay, interesting. Here we are standing at Teddy's compost uh, box. Now, Explain to me what you're doing with this. Yeah. So the idea behind this little compost box is we I've built it so that eventually you can pull out the bottom one when it's ready and start oh. harvesting your ready compost. So that moves and then all the leaves go back into the top of this. Yes. And then kind of like a cake, every couple layers, we'll actually add in a bunch of charcoal dust to start rotting down with everything. Oh, I see. And I so see we'll mix color. that together. And yeah. as that rots down, and I've got some ready over there that I'll bring over. Oh, I love the smell, huh? Yeah, and you can see it smell really right away. Yeah, yeah. So a little bit of water, a little yeah. bit of EM, you know, those essential yeah. microorganisms. A whole bunch of charcoal, a bit of manure. And yeah. then it's really nice to mix dry and green. Okay. Um, you know, preaching to the choir, telling no, people how yeah, to do yeah, compost. Yeah. But yeah, as yeah. everyone no, has a compost, us, yeah. but this really does help. If you mix a bit of dry and green things together, speeds up the rotting down. Yeah. Little bits of cardboard sometimes. And then I usually, because I water it and it's really hot and dry at the moment, I'll keep it covered up with a little bit of plastic just yes. to reduce the evaporation. And how long does it take to actually get the compost ready? So this first this batch, one. we just built this like a week ago. So okay. probably within a month or two, I'll be able to start harvesting out the bottom. Okay. And then we'll continue adding on the top so it's sort of like a continual batch yeah, compost which is a tray. good idea and then eventually these the ants will probably eat them in i don't know a year year and a half or something and then these so, go back into the compost and then yeah. build a new one on another spot somewhere else so what you actually do is you pull it from here and then this goes down yeah so as, it, as it compost. gets ready yeah That's you pull really it from there and keep idea. adding at the top keep yeah. adding and yeah. you don't have to do this size it can yeah. be skinnier taller it can be wider um, just so whatever fits for you. And then what I try to always do in the garden mm -hmm. is keep them scattered apart because you don't want to use too much time carrying all the leaves oh, yeah, to the far end. Yeah, You'd yeah. rather have many small compost bits. Yeah. And you know, for some people they're like, oh, but it looks messy. Like, no, this I is think gold. It looks actually, what do you mean? No, compost I mean, this is the best is, thing yeah, in the yeah, world. Yeah, I'd love to have this.